Hello everyone, this is Redact and this game is called Suzerain. So we're having some internal troubles and maybe some external troubles, but there's nothing that I can't solve. I am the smartest person in the room, even though there's only one person in the room. But let's uh, let's resume. Right, let's do the second half, or second part of this meeting then. Upon invitation, Yusuf Lancia, along with the three high-ranking officials from the Ministry of Defence, walked into the room. One of the men was none other than General Kruger, the Chief of the Armed Forces. Yusuf made his way towards the table while the other stood by the door. Mr. President, let's begin. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I brought General Kruger with me due to the escalations on our borders. General Kruger stepped forward and saluted. He had a strong jaw with sharp cheekbones. His tall, tall stature, uniform and medals combined with his deep and intense stare made him look threatening. He was in his 70s, yet he had a bulky body that was the result of his commando training. Not only was he the second most decorated officer in Swordland, he was also the longest serving. Shake his hand, salute him. I shall salute him because he saluted me. He's probably going to be offended because I'm not a soldier. Though I was a soldier. He smiled at the gesture and bowed his head in respect. Good. He tapped his foot impatiently. He seemed uneasy with the presence of another high-ranking officer in the room. Gentlemen, thanks for coming to this significant gathering. Let's begin. Okay, what's going on? Yusuf and Vulcan took their seats while the rest of the officers stood by the door. What's going on with that? Okay. Mr. President, the situation in the west and northern front borders towards Rumsberg is very tense. We are zooming deployments of divisions closer to our border. Rumsberg has been actively increasingly expansionist in the past decades and also interfered in Agnolia. Now they have turned their thoughts on ours. Constitutional monarchy. I trust the capabilities of our armed forces. Yeah, I trust. We can show you of our capabilities, but we don't have unlimited resources. Seems like they want to increase the pressure both externally and, and internally. Mr. President, if I may. Please, General. The picture is becoming clearer. The latest information from the interior about the weapons caches, and now there is an active military buildup close to our borders. Oh, shit. The entire situation was analysed by our general staff and our prediction is a future ter territorial incursion by Rumberg. I have complete trust in the general staff. We will not let you down, Mr. President. The general staff is com composed of the smartest military individuals. I request an increase in the military budget to enlist more soldiers. Only then we can stand strong against our enemies. The enlarged armed forces will hold them at bay. Vulcan is right, we do need an increase in the military budget, though we don't see eye to eye exactly how to spend the budget, that much we agree on. I have my concerns about Rimberg too, we need strong allies to, to withstand such a superior power. They are our nemesis. That is an understatement. Things are, times are changing and war is coming, Mr. President. Whether we like it or not, we must be prepared. During the election you said nothing about focusing on our military. I used to reconsider and increase the military budget. The future of the safety of Swordland is in your hands. As you said, times change, Yusuf. We shall see. I am the man of my word. I didn't say anything about it. So I'm not sure. Maybe you are right. Defense of our nation is more important. As you say, times change. We shall see. So I also need to increase the police. And I've only got two budget points left. This is why I'm hesitating. Yeah, we'll see. A smile brought a glimmer of hope on Yusuf's face. Our forces would crumble and a decrease, and Rumberg would much, be much more compelled to exploit our, win, our weakness. We're not going to decrease it. Our country hasn't fallen to any invading force for 200 years. We cannot let it happen, Mr. President. To find regional allies like Vargsland or Lepia, Lesbia to deter Rumberg. 
There are several options on the table. Socialist Republic. Hmm. Lespia. Eastern Parliamentary Republic. Remberg. Hmm. Okay. Remember, we're willing to attack any nation allied with any superpower. Sword must stand on its own two feet and be able to defend itself. These options should be considered, yes. Let's consider it. Not saying we're going to do it. They should be considered, but why pander to others when we can solve these issues ourselves? We have no true friends outside these borders. Everyone fell silent when a soldier entered the room and let Yosef Lancia know that a call will come through from the ministry. Excuse me, Mr. President. He left the uh, room to answer. A few minutes later, he entered the room again. His expression had changed. Mr. President, there had been Rumbergian military activity close to the Narva border. I just spoke with the local commander. Shit. Go to location. Is it one of ours? Yeah, it's one of ours. Hmm. We should go to the Ministry and get further updates from our branches. Understood. Raising military readiness is the first call of action. If it's truly an extraordinary attempt, we shall relay it to you immediately and wait further orders, Mr. President. Make sure they know we are observant and ready. Go show them the might of the sword is, of the Swordish Armed Services. Your service is appreciated, gentlemen. Remain calm. Make sure not to escalate further. No, nobody wants a war. Yeah, we're observant and ready. Always watching, always ready is our motto, sir. Hail Swordland. Hail Swordland. Hail. They salute and left the room. Ramberg already testing us and the reports from the interior indicate interference inside our borders. Communists, nationalists, Buddhist, oh, bloodist rebels, Ramberg expansionism. What was next? Oh my goodness. Swordland has always been a key piece in the chessboard of the global rivalry between Arcasia and United Contra. Arcasia is the... Superpower, yeah. That's the Americans, then. There's no such aggression from Rumberg. Not at these levels, at least. Hmm. Well, it takes a tiny spark to start the flames of war. The phone rang. Rumberg had decided to close their consulate in Lackhaven. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can we ally with these guys? Are these nice people? Very introverted. Can it longer be in the shadow of Swordland while suffering territorial pressure from Rumberg? Hmm. An alliance with them is probably or well, anyone really might need to ally with someone but I don't really want to Okay, what's going on here? Around midnight, Red Youth protests this clash of young swords at the Vestal City Centre, resulting in many injuries. The counter protesters were cornered in front of the United Contra Embassy after they were pushed back by the police. The embassy opens the doors and the Red Youth members escaped inside. They're definitely in doing something. Police are still waiting outside the building for the return. Right. These scumbags. Maybe we can ally with these guys. Who are these guys? Oh, yeah. Island nation, major naval power. Yeah, maybe we ally with these two up here. Who else? These guys, but they're not... Well, they could... They could be alright, I suppose. Who are these guys? Who are they? Hmm. Who are these guys? It's extraordinarily hospitable, but like the lowering living standards. Hmm. So we can't really ally with the superpowers then, because they're not on the map, unless we get some sort of option. So maybe we have to trade, uh, trade and ally with them. Oh, Arcasia developed its first ICBM. Brilliant. Completed the missile for an intercontinental ballistic missile that has the estimated capability to accurately destroy targets at thousands of kilometers range. 
Caucasian missile capabilities have significantly increased, posing a threat to territories that are further away. Damn. All right. Rumors of an infrastructure project. Anonymous sources reported Solon today that several government officials have invited construction companies to meetings. Running a new major infrastructure project? If true, this is great news, as infrastructure in Solon is lacking heavily needed investment. Very qualified and experienced companies like Underhaul. Sold half its shares to Walter Tusk. Hmm. Yeah, we want him to be our bitch, don't we? Gang violence claims young girl's life. Young girl was shot dead as she walked her dog. She was shot at 4.45, right before she was returning home. A man who witnessed the event told police the shooters yelled a gang slogan at him on the street before he heard someone fire at least 10 shots. He later saw the victim had been hit and called authorities. Damn. Geopolitical. Rumbo closes consulate. Comes right after the deployment of Rungbergen points near the northern borders. Rungbergen's officials cite political unrest and uncertainty as the main reason for the closure. Rungbergen flying has been lowered overnight and the diplomatic staff are expected to leave Swordland on Friday or Saturday. Many lack... 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 Macha Venice was shocked... As 120-year-old Rumberg consulate closed, dozens of citizens with Rumbergian relatives went out to protest against this action. Not clear if it's temporary or permanent. Hmm. Underhaul Construction once again. Underhaul Construction is getting picked as number one construction company of the year. Yeah, so they're probably going to build that railway for us. Currency the employees first and foremost in private company meeting had a luxurious resort in Erlery. Oh, right, so he's on the board of advisors of Underhaul. Okay. Hmm, radical. 1927, never again. Right, so they don't want 1927 again. Which was the coup. Real truth behind the economic crisis. We have all seen this scenario play out before. Large corporation businesses time and again receive money from the government under the disguise of helping the economy. What about the people? Trickle down economics, it works. Many in the neglected regions still do not have electricity or fresh water in their homes and they are the lucky ones. Growing housing crisis and people are on the streets begging for food. In the year 1954, High time that the money is invested in us, the people of Swordland, instead of armchair millionaires in their... <laughs> they look serious. Okay, fine. Alright, let's have dinner with the family. A long day at the pie, so I was finally home. I thanked Serge and walked through the front gates, nodding at the two guards. When I was turned the doorknob, I knew Deanna rushing down the stairs to greet me. I opened the door, and there she was, standing in front of me with expectant eyes. Papa, you're home. Lift and hug her, yes. Hugged her while trying to put the keys in the tray next to the entrance. She was growing fast. Lifting her up was no longer as easy as it once was. How was school? Boring. I like my old school better. I put her down, her expression turned serious. Papa, are the bad, bad men gone? They will be. They'll be in the oubliette. Soon enough. There's only one bad man, Deanna, and yes, he's gone now. I won't let anyone hurt you ever. I took care of everything. Okay, Papa. She dashed down the hallway. Ah, uh, Papa's here. Monica appeared next to the kitchen door. She was wearing an apron, holding a spatula. Now, what did I tell you? No running in the house. Yes, Mama. When I approached me and kissed me on the cheek, a tantalizing smell whiffed from the kitchen behind her. Darling, you shouldn't have. What do we have a cook for? Let's ask about her day. Terrific. Got to do some shopping. To make it my favourite, you mean? Yes. Lorshall. Or Lorsha. Lorsha? Lorsha. Lorsha was a 
Lactavin specialty usually reserved for special occasions. A rich seafood stew with a heady garlic and paprika kick. Okay. It's absolutely my favourite dish, especially paired with keb kebichi, kebichi, a potent unfiltered wine. I kiss her on the cheek. Yeah, kiss her back. I want to cheer everyone up a bit. Her smile faded and she lowered her voice so Deanna couldn't hear. This just loved what happened at the ball. I am worried, Anton, for you, the children, and for the country. Deanna suddenly appeared next to us. Mama? Yes, sweetheart. I'm hungry. Be in a minute. Will you help me set the table? Anton, can you tell Frank to come down for dinner? He's been sulking his room all day. Rock and roll music echoed down the hallway. I caught a faint hint of cigarette smoke. Knock on the door. Got to respect people's privacy. There's no response. Knock on the door again. Still no response. Bang on the door. Stereo in Frank rooms clicked off. All right, all right. You unlocked and opened the door. What do you want? <laughs> what? Food is ready. I am your father and you will respond when I ask for you. Hand over the cigarettes and join your family for dinner. How old is he? Does it say? Studying. He's studying at high school. I'm not sure he's old enough to have those. Yeah, you'll respond to me when I ask for you, okay? Sorry, Dad. I mean, Father. It won't happen again. Headed downstairs. Dining room. I followed after. Table was prepared and they were ladling the food into the plates. I started eating, the room went quiet. Monica's cooking was as delicious as ever, but I had the feeling there wasn't the reason nobody spoke. Monica was the first to break the silence. Say, did you know they refurbished the grocery store? I don't even remember the owner. He's been here, there every day for the past 30 years. Can you imagine doing the same job for so long? What have you been present for 20 years? 20? It's going to be 50 years. I'll die in office. Honestly, would it really be that bad? I don't want the, suff the country to suffer under another soul. 20 years of this, I'll be dead. Why not? We could live like kings. Yeah, I don't want them to suffer. Agreed, that must never happen again. Anyway, the grocer really is a nice person. He threw in some extra vegetables with my... Frank suddenly slammed his hands on the table, rattling the china. So what is it going... This is how it's going to be? We're just going to sit like nothing happened? Dad, you could have been killed. Mum could have been killed. Any one of us could have died. Danny's lower lip started trembling. Monica put her hand on Frank's shoulder. Frank, you know I never let happen, anything happen to you or Deanna. Even it cost me my life. Yeah. I know, I know, but still. You need to tell me something's been done about this. It's really close, Dad. My security shows me that we, they took all the necessary steps. It was wrong route shoot, we're not even the target. Yeah. But what if we were? Listen to your father. Your father says we don't need to worry, then we don't need to worry. You have to trust him. Monica turned to me. We all have to trust each other. Things calmed down a bit at the table, and we finished our food. Frank got up first and retreated back to his room. Monica lifted Deanna up. Popped in front of the living room TV before returning to the table. She sat down across from me. Anton, he is still young. He should feel lucky as a father who cares about him. I never had that. I know, but he's not much older. We children from the ugliness of the world. That's what worries me. I made plenty of rash decisions when I was his age. Yeah. How much longer we can shield him. He's scared, Anton. Frankly, he isn't the only one. I promise it's truly a threat. You'll be the first to know. Got up, stood behind me and massaged my soldiers for a moment before leaving me alone in the dining room. I sat alone at the table and drained my glass of wine. Had I been lying to Frank and Deanna? Was a threat to my family truly over? Time would tell. Okay, anything happened on the board? No, no. Then we read the newspapers, I suppose. Say anything interesting to me. What's going on here? Reactor unrest. A decision to address the instability in the nation. End of day at the Marine Palace.
Okay, let's see the news first. Protests across Swordland. Protests erupted after the death of, of Bernard Circus. Started peace will turn violent. Protesters from Red Youth like seen in central cities, carrying up violent riots and organizing protests. Protests held sit ins were broken up by riot police with tear gas and water cannons. Thousands of people poured into Republic Avenue. Sooner protests around Sunderland and turn into violent riots. Okay, we need to crack down on this. Protests in Guruni. So, young swords, the increase of living. Well, we'll, get, we'll sort these guys out and those red lads. Inequality prevalent in the country. Large rallies have been organized. Large congregation Red Youth members have organized sit ins and protests. Political chaos. Political violence has surrounded Swordland since yesterday, while officials from the police claim to have the situation under control. Protests are turning into riots. Violence attacks are occurring around the city. National Front Party, those are, yeah, those are the ultra-conservative ones. Called a rally to condemn communist, communist influence from the United Contara. Called to violent protests as traitors to Swordland. They're roaming in the streets, conducting violent attacks in disguise as peaceful protesters. We can't let them exploit a murder. And then the Labour Union in Swordland has gathered to condemn nationalist violence in Swordland. The protests gathered crowds, several thousands, agitators from both sides. Young swords vandalised shops. We're going to crack down on these guys and the other ones. Can't I can't be doing with it. Vandalised dozens of shops targeting the Bludish and Agno Swordish minorities. NFP office burned. Hmm. There was another news article. Oh, here we go. The wrong economy. It's made a decision to promote a plan economy. A decision that is based on flawed arguments of solonomics. Solononomics. Something like that. Economics believe in the free market economy for good reason. We don't support the excessive form of capitalism. Yeah, there, there is excesses spreading around the world like, a, like in... Lesbia, a belief is a balance can exist. Exactly, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I said a balance. Business should take the need of economic planning burden off the shoulder of the government. We disagree with planning economy simply because you can't properly micromanage everything in a society where people need to determine their own future. The swordish people don't deserve to be shackled. It's sad to know the present reign doesn't think the same way. Just you wait. Just you wait. I am a genius. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to sort out this invasion. We're going to sort out this internal rest. We're going to sort out the economy. We're going to do all of it. React to the unrest. The political situation around the world has escalated. Chief Strategist Lucian prepared several action plans we can execute. What we would do to address the intensifying political climate. Call for restraint. Visited affected towns. Label all protesters as traitors. <laughs> Expand the police. Yeah, let's expand the police. Did that do something? Turn two. I aided the police forces and I supported the police forces and aided their recruitment effort to stabilize the country. Yes, I did. President Rain deploys more police. Announced to speed up the deployment of police forces and boosted recruitment. On the protests and riots that popped up in the country, which is triggered by the death of Circus. According to Chief of Police, police ranks across Ordnance will soon be boosted with an additional three founders and officers who are under training but are now to be deployed immediately. Also added, the recruitment target for next year will be increased, along with the expansion of the capacities of police academies. Rain adds fuel to the fire. Yes. Government is increasing the number of active police forces. Light of the current events that span the entire Swordland. This will cause an expected reaction from a USP president who will not only have insecurities about Swordland but also have his party and his own wisdom. <laughs> Fuck you. In these days of pain and suffering, we advise everyone to show restraint, peacefully protest. Well, you're not peacefully protesting, are you? None of you guys are doing it. Those red lads and those other lads or whatever. I would let you do it peacefully, but you're not. 
The government ha might have forgotten about us, but we still have our idea of a peaceful community. Okay, you can back off. You're going to be a... What happened? Enlarged police force. Inexperienced police recruits. Brilliant. Nationwide revolt. Enlarged police force. Corruption. We need to sort out this organized crime. Yeah, we'll get there. All right, let's end the day. It's late in the evening. The Marine Palace was getting somewhat quiet when I returned to my office at the top. I eagerly approached my chair and sprawled out on it. It's been an exhausting day, just like every day since I took office. Yeah, let's just lean back. Let's just take five minutes to relax. Stretched out my arms, leaned back in my chair and took a deep breath. The skyline was daunting but beautiful. I glanced down at the window and saw Serge and the guards waiting for me at the main gate. I would knock on the door. My secretary, Lever, entered. Mr. President, Mr. Tusk is here to see you. We had a meeting with the Lof Loferberg spokesman. I'm so sorry for not giving you any proper notice. Uh, don't worry about it. Do your job properly next time. Do you expect to keep track of everything? Just about to leave. Maybe we can put... No, let's meet him. Thank you for the understanding. After a moment, Mr. Tusk swaggered in. So he's the... Yeah, he's the... Yeah, we need to... Try and sway him to our side. Met Saul and most prominent businessman once or twice, but never alone. He had large jowls, blinding shiny shoes, and an air of someone who was used to getting his way. Anything to drink, Mr. Tusk? Water? Whiskey? Cognac, probably from before you were born, sweetheart. I, I'll check the supply room. She backed out of the office. Gord hang up his hat. Fixed me a long hard stand, broke into a toothy grin. Good evening, Mr. President. I'm here to congratulate you. Both sat down. Our business partners, I wish to do a successful term as leader of our nation. Thank you. I had no chance to say this to the board with all the panic, but we're very much looking forward to working with you. Likewise. Thank you. I'd like to build a profitable relationship between us. That being said, there are some concerns of mine and the people I represent. I would like to take an opportunity to clear up. What are the concerns? The ruined state of the economy has influenced everyone. The recession has hit us all hard. Uh, would you like a cigar? Um, I'll do it with him, I suppose. Now we are talking. A man who knows pleasure in business. Would have grabbed myself a cigar and lit up as well. We looked at city as we both puffed away. How do you purchase stock from Armadine Industries and... Our case is smart buy. They are developing new gadgets that are going to be profitable. With risk comes reward. I expect a very good return on my investment. Spend money to make money, they say. Let's see if it holds true. Yeah. Be surprised at what one can achieve given the resources in capitalism. I will buy a couple of thousand shares too to expand my portfolio. The investments pay off for both of us, President. His eyes wandered away. The assassination and troubles between the left and right are worrying, but the recession is the root cause of these issues. But is it worrying to see that you have decided to promote a planned economy? The recession was triggered by the market reforms of Alfonso. We need more government to control to fix the economy. I don't mind that we disagree. There are some things we need some control. Do you really though? I mean, it's already overburdened with managing several key industries with the loss of efficiency. High-speed rail investment was a great decision. The business logistics will improve them, boost the economy once finished. The intent of the administration is to boost the economy. Got to focus on the needs. Yeah, it's to boost the economy. The right intentions. We can be close allies. The group can help you get Sordland out of the recession which would be the key problem to solve in your term and could even determine your re-election. Let's start with a gesture of goodwill. Soon the investment project contract will be awarded to one of the three main contenders. He pulled a check out of his pocket and slid it towards the table. My personal bank details were listed on it with a deposit of 500,000 swordish ren ready to be transferred. This was six months of a president's salary. If the contract is somewhere, some I was going to do it anyway, Contract somewhere awarded to Underhall Construction. They would not only work hard to deliver, but also do it on time. What do you think, Mr. Rain? Would it be good? He put his index on the check. There's a noise by the door. 
Livia Suna was standing there holding a tray and a bottle and two glasses. I'm so sorry, Mr. Tusk, but all I could find was a 1942. I hope that's acceptable. She quickly put the table on the desk and walked out. Tusk eyed her as he left. Remind me to visit your office more often. Now, where were we? Do we have a deal? <laughs> Mr. Demon, I'm looking forward to a future transaction to take the bribe. Not yet, we both think you can do better than that. I will make my own decision. Did you just try to bribe the President of Swordland? I refuse! No. I'll make my own decision, thank you. It will probably be you anyway, but I'm not taking a bribe. Walt aside and pulled the check away, putting it in his pocket. Did you think I was just another corrupt politician? This is what you came for, then we are done here. Thank you for your visit nonetheless. Be careful, Mr. Tusk. We have to make your deals in the presence. I'm not going to threaten him. Thank you for the visit nonetheless. Good to share opinions and we will meet again in the future for sure. I almost forgot. Please say hello to Mr. Corone T for me. He smiled. Have a good evening, President. Walter stood up, grabbed his jacket, made his way towards the door. Closed the door behind him. Gathered my things and prepared to finally head home. As I walked out, I noticed Livia still there covering up a typewriter for the evening. If I may be so bold, Mr. President, did you accept his offer? <laughs> this is absolutely none of your business. How suspicious is that? Do not speak about it again. You didn't see anything. No, I'll tell her the truth. Of course I didn't. How could you even ask me that? It's the truth. The other girls have told me about all kinds of dealings that went on during the Alfonso administration. I wasn't sure if you were the ki that kind of president. I most certainly am not. Don't worry, you're pretty ahead about it. Oh, that's also offensive. Come on. I'm, oh, should I be offensive? No, no, we're not going to do that. She and I took a moment to look over the lights of the city before heading to the elevators. There we go. All right. Well, that's the end of this episode. We refused a bribe. We're not going to be corrupt. We are going to blackmail and we are going to cajole people and we're going to leverage and things like that. But we're not going to take bribes. Unless it's a, a way to put them into a position so that we can blackmail them with their attempts to bribe me if the game does that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will be back again uh, next time. Take care, everyone.